guys, welcome to the channel. This is my 2024 Audi RS3. And in this video, I wanna make a 2,500 mile update and uh, updated impressions on what it's like to own this car for the 2,500 miles that I've had it. So I did make a video a while back going over my buyer's remorse with this car. If you guys don't know, I traded in a 2023 Mark 8 Golf R 20th anniversary edition for this RS3. And I don't know what prompted me to make that decision. I thought that I just liked this car so much more. And you know, I thought that it would just be so fantastic and great. Like, you know, I've been reading about. It hasn't really been all, you know, unicorns and rainbows, unfortunately, with this car. It looks great. Like I have no, no doubt in my mind this car looks amazing, right? I love the grill. It's all cleaned up right now. The Kimura Gray, I picked that color. I special ordered this color. Kimura Gray looks amazing. I like the little sunroof up there. The way it looks, I don't like the function of the sunroof, but I like the way it looks. The window tint makes it look good. The tire's all shined up and stuff. So I think it's a really good looking car. No doubt about that. You see in the back, the back is really clean. It's a really good looking car. Uh, the only issue is when it comes to driving it as a daily driver. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, like an RS3, driving is probably the best part of it. But honestly, this car looks better than it drives. Um, wide open throttle, it drives good, you know, it sounds good, revving through the RPMs and it's decently quick, but um, just cruising around using it as a daily driver is actually not that impressive. All right, so when I made this, when I made the original video, I just bought the car, I had a bunch of buyer's remorse. Let's go ahead and start it up here. Now I've lived with the car for a little while now, so you got 2399 miles. By the way, this video is shot on July 22nd. In my initial video, I mentioned how the headroom sucks, right? I've gotten used to just kind of slouching in my seat a little bit to not touch the top. Cause if I like raise my, if I like sit up straight, I'm gonna hit the top. Or if my hair is not cut, I'm gonna hit the top. But when I have a haircut and I slouch a little bit, the headroom works. So I can make it work in a pinch. I did mention about like the legs being kind of like tight. By the way, it's super hot out guys. So I do have the AC running. I apologize for that background noise. Um, but I did mention how this is super tight with my legs. It still kind of is, but I've kind of gotten used to it. You know, I just realized that this car is just not gonna have as much space as my Golf R did. And it's just gonna be a little tighter, but I've gotten kind of used to that. Over on this side, that's not that bad you know I do bump this a little bit but it's not that bad so that's not as big of a deal I know there was a lot of people in the comments talking about like you're way too tall for this car and I understand that but oftentimes headroom is the only problem for me usually everything else fits fine it's, us it's usually just the headroom this gauge cluster it looks cool don't get me wrong but for whatever reason it won't save what I left the screen on last like if I leave the screen on let's say long-term memory right and i turn off the car start up the next day and get in it's going to default back to the date and time which is kind of annoying lighting the headlights on this car are amazing at night they light up great it has cornering lights the uh, high beam is good so no complaints with the lighting comfort the seats you know like i said they're not perforated and stuff but the seats themselves are pretty comfortable like for my for my body body type and everything the seats are very comfortable so i have no issues with the seats as far as like the comfort's concerned. I do like having these physical climate controls. However, I just like the way they look and I like touching the buttons and stuff, but honestly, um, I don't mess around with my climate control. I put on auto 72 degrees with the AC on and I just leave it alone. Uh, or in the winter months, I'll keep it on 72, but with the AC off. So, you know, I don't really mess around with the climate controls all the time. In my other video, I mentioned how the back seat doesn't have any space in it. The back seat still doesn't have any space, but I haven't had anyone really back there and honestly if you're like I don't know maybe five six or less then you can fit back there fine as long as the person in the front isn't super tall so honestly the back seat I, I made it a little bit more of an issue than it really is and plus I'm an awkward long torso um, most people will probably have no problem sitting in the back it does have the little air vents back there but it doesn't have any sort of like heated seats or any nice screen or anything like that another thing i was concerned with was the sunroof uh, like not only the headroom it takes away but also having the sun shine through you can see right there that's still super annoying um, because when i'm driving sometimes the sun is shining in my eyes and sometimes i can still feel the sun coming through the sunroof so that's a little frustrating i'll probably have to tint this 
I know I mentioned in a video a while back that I'm gonna have this tinted. I just haven't got around to getting it yet. All right, guys, for the next part of the video, we're gonna take the RSD for a spin and give you guys some more updated impressions. Another thing I'm gonna do is answer some of the most common questions I got on my uh, buyer's remorse video I made on this car. And by the way, I appreciate you guys for watching that video. Um, it did do pretty well on the channel. I don't ever make videos like videos that are not truthful just to make views, by the way. If I, I want to make glowing reviews of this car, I want to say how much I love this car. I want to make a video saying, yes, you should buy an RS3, but I'm honest. And you know, I'm going to tell you if I don't, if I personally don't like it, that doesn't mean that you're not going to like it, but that's the things that I dislike about it. So remember, everyone's opinion's different. Everyone's going to have a different opinion. You know, some people might like the way a Toyota Corolla drives, whereas I don't, you know? So, you know, everyone has a different opinion, but anyway, as far as the driving, I did mention in that video, the low end torque was kind of frustrating. And honestly, that's still present, right? The low end torque is still frustrating with this car. You have to really push it past like 3,000, 3,500 RPM uh, for it to get going. And then once you do that, it's kind of like a double-edged sword because if you don't push on it that much, it's, it's accelerating really slow and shifting super early. And if you do push on it harder, then it gives you too much power for just cruising around in daily driving situations. But like, let's take off onto this road here. So again, you have to get past 3500 RPM for it to get moving. If it shifts before then, you're not gonna go anywhere. And then another thing too is like, you might be thinking to yourself, well, just use S mode. Yeah, I'd love to use S, right? S shifts a little bit later, which is great. But again, it gives you a little too much power if you go past 3500 RPM. And then when it shifts, it kind of like loses power. Like it's not a consistent pull. So it'll like pull hard, it'll shift and it'll lose power. And then it'll start pulling again and then it'll shift and lose power. So it's not like a consistent pull like all the other cars I've owned in the past have been. My EcoBoost Mustang, my GTI, my Golf R, everything. Uh, it's a consistent pull when it shifts gears. It's not like it's losing power every time it shifts. So that's another thing that's a little weird about this car and that's still obviously present. Uh, reliability wise, I haven't had any issues with this car. Uh, Apple CarPlay sometimes randomly disconnects, even more so than my Golf R. So my Golf R, there's a one spot by my parents' house where it always disconnect. This car, random spots around the whole Vegas Valley here, it'll, it'll disconnect randomly. My M2 doesn't have any issues with Apple CarPlay disconnecting, ever. I've never had an issue with Apple CarPlay disconnecting no matter where I drive. So that's another thing that's a little frustrating. Other than that, the car has been nice to drive. You know, I like the way, you know, the new car smells nice in here. Uh, it looks great on the outside. The suspension is pretty comfortable in like the normal setting. Like I'm in auto right now, but if I put in the comfort setting, the suspension is pretty soft, so I do appreciate the soft suspension. Uh, one thing about the RS3 that's really annoying is the turning radius. So if you guys don't know, RS3s have a reverse stagger. So I have two 65s in the front and two 45s in the rear. And with those super wide front tires, the turning radius for a small car sucks. Like it's terrible. Um, there's been several times where I had to make three point turns where every other normal car, even like a Ford Explorer would be able to make it. I did mention in that other video something about like the visibility. I've gotten used to the visibility. Usually when you live with the car for a while, you kind of get used to the visibility and um, you know how to look out of it. That's not really an issue anymore with like the B pillar and all that. The, the windows are smaller and all that than my Golf R, but honestly, the visibility is not that big of an issue. Although since I'm so tall, this mirror does kind of block a lot of my like vision over there. So I kind of have to go like, look down out from under the mirror if I want to kind of see what's over there but I've gotten kind of used to doing that we're gonna get on onto the street here uh, we're just gonna accelerate normally and I'm gonna kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about with that low end torque issue so we're just accelerating normally second gear third no power no power yeah see so you really have to just get in it for it to get going and for a daily driver, again, I use this car as a daily driver. I don't take this car out on weekends to battle the canyons. This car I use as a daily driver. You want low end torque in a daily driver. And this car is great when you're all out. Like I know I mentioned previously, I was a little disappointed with the performance. 
one thing I've uh, learned to realize with this car is that it's super temperature sensitive. And then also it's gas sensitive. So if I put a few gallons of E85 in to make like an E30 mixture, it makes the car much faster. And I'll have a video out on that if it's not out before this one, uh, showing you guys what the exact difference is between E30 and normal 91 gas. I was a little disappointed with the performance. I'm honestly not that disappointed with the all out performance. Like when you're a wide open throttle, it accelerates just fine. Like I can't complain. Gas mileage hasn't really been great either. Part of the reason why is because, again, I have to get on it if I want to accelerate at a quicker pace. And then I have to rev it out super fast and kind of accelerate really hard. Whereas if it had low end torque, I'd just be able to utilize that low end torque without going crazy. So this car, even though it's rated to get really good gas mileage, and I'm sure it will on like a road trip, I haven't been getting really good gas mileage on this car. I've been getting like 20, 21 per tank. And that's with me just doing my daily driving stuff, you know, a pole here and there, but it just, you know, you have to get on it so much to just drive normally. And I know you may be thinking, oh, just put it in S mode. S is not practical to drive around with every day. You don't want the car doing aggressive downshifts and revving super high when you're just driving from stoplight to stoplight. That's detrimental to fuel economy. And it's just, it's annoying when it's, when it's like that all the time. So no, I'm not gonna drive around in S all the time. Now I want to answer some questions, some uh, some of the most common questions I got on my uh, buyer's remorse video I made with this car. The first question, didn't you do a proper test drive before buying it? That's an excellent question. And yes, I did test drive the car, but I test over for what, five, 10 minutes. I had a salesman in there with me. Um, you know, I didn't want to beat on the car because if I was going to take it, you know, I didn't want to beat on a car with, you know, 10 miles on it. So I didn't get a good feel for the car on the test drive. And you know you, you can't get a good feel for the car in a test drive unless you take some you know if you take the car for two days you know take it home and live with it for a little bit but when you go on a short test drive you don't get the full story I didn't know that the car had such terrible low end torque I didn't know that the car wasn't going to be as fast as I was thinking um, you know I didn't know all of those things I didn't know that it was going to be super tight when I get in and out of it um, you know and super. Well, actually the, the space, like I said, is not that big of a deal anymore because I've been kind of getting used to it. But, um, you know, those are things that I don't know when you just go on a short test drive. But yes, I did test drive the car. Question number two, just tune the RS3. It's gonna be a monster once you tune it. You can't tune the AY RS3. People don't un seem to understand that. Uh, if you do a little bit of research, you'll find out that you cannot simply tune the AY RS3. You have to spend $6,000 to get some standalone ECU nonsense with IROS. And I have no interest in doing that. Uh, you know, I just want my daily driver to feel good on the stock power. And plus, I wouldn't want to tune a car that's that's brand new anyway. Um, you know, I waited a little while for my Golf R and they had tunes available and I saw what uh, some of my buddies that had the tune and stuff were doing. I was like, you know what, I'll do the tune. But on this car, no. I think those people are are stuck in the past and they're thinking of the 8V RS3. Oh, you just do stage two E85 and you're running 10s and you're doing this and that and you just tune it and it's so easy. You can't do that with the 8Y RS3. You can't do that as of shooting this video. Next question. A lot of people ask me since I was so disappointed with the RS3, they're like, well, why did you trade in the Golf R at all? Why did you trade it in? Why did you even think about trading it if you loved your Golf R so much? Again, another valid question. However, everyone makes mistakes. I thought I was going to love this car even more than my Golf R or just as much as my Golf R. But it turns out I don't. So it was a mistake that I made. So I'm more than happy to own up to my mistakes and buying this car was one of them. Now we got to get up to speed here. But yeah, those were the those were the main questions, you know. I just wanted to answer them in a video so I can explain to you guys my thought process and everything. Have I warmed up to this car? I have a little bit, you know. I do like driving it still. There's just, it's just not a perfect car, unfortunately. And no car is perfect, but this car has a lot of imperfections and stuff that could be ironed out or stuff that could be improved upon. Based off of my experience owning it and owning several other vehicles like a GTI and like a Golf R, um, like my Mustang GT, you know, owning a pretty decent little range of vehicles, this one is, you know, it's good, but it's not anything crazy. 
Like my M2, I love talking about it. I love my M2, right? It's, it's great. But this car is kind of like, meh, hey, hey, you know, it's whatever, it sounds cool, you know. I still regret my decision and I wish I didn't buy it. Again, the new Audi S5 is out. I'm eyeing that car and then the Mark 8.5 Golf R is also gonna be coming out. So those are two cars that I am interested in uh, checking out. So I'd be open to those. So definitely stay tuned. We might have one of those cars on the channel or maybe I'll just end up keeping the RS3. I don't know, we'll see. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you in the next one.